What's up everybody? It's Brad here from RoboFlow, and in this week's video, we're talking all about deployment. In many of our other videos, we teach you how to train a really good computer vision model, but in truth, that's only half the battle. Once you have a good model, you're going to have to figure out how to get it into the hands of your users. And whether you want to deploy it to the cloud or on an edge device, we've got you covered. So buckle up, because here we go. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you already have a trained model on your RoboFlow account that you're ready to deploy to your users. And if that's not the case, don't worry, because we're going to show you in a second how you can skip the entire first part of the process and start right with the deployment uh, without even having to go through and collect images, label them, and train a custom model. But for now, let's talk about the first and simplest deployment option, which is our cloud-hosted API. So what we've done is we've taken all the hard work out of MLOps, and every time you train a model in RoboFlow, we deploy it up into the cloud into an infinitely scalable API. And what that means is you don't have to worry about managing how many servers that you're going to need or scaling them up and down, or even if you get on the front page of Hacker News, we have you covered. And in fact, we've already tested this that exact situation with one of our projects that got hundreds of thousands of users in the first few days, and it didn't even blink. It was a great test of our infrastructure, and it passed with flying colors. In fact, had one of our friends not told us that we were on the front page of Hacker News, we might not even have noticed. So without further ado, let's dive in and see how the cloud-hosted API works. So I mentioned that uh, even if you don't have a trained model on your RoboFlow account, we still have you covered. We're going to use a model from RoboFlow Universe. So if you go to universe.roboflow.com, you can scroll through and you can find a model that you might want to use. So let's use this hard hat data set uh, that somebody has already compiled and trained a model for us with. Uh, basically, if I click try this model, I can come here and I can click use curl command. And this curl command is going to hit our remote API for this model, uh, which lives at detect.roboflow.com slash this model's ID. And when we hit this URL with an image, it'll return back predictions. Um, so let's see how this is going to work. So I will just copy this snippet here. And I'm going to open, I'm on Windows right now, um, but I could actually use Windows subsystem for Linux uh, to use curl and hit this URL. Um, so let's see, I guess I'm going to need an image to uh, infer against first. So this directory is empty. Um, I've gone ahead and searched on Google image for construction workers. So remember, we're doing a hard hat data set. Let's see what this model does. Uh, it should find one, two, three, four, five, six hard hats and one person without a hard hat. So if I just go in here and copy this image address, uh, I can just curl that and output it to workers.jpg. And that'll just download it to my computer. I now have this workers.jpg file. Okay, so if I want to run that through this model that's trained to detect hard hats, um, that's where I'm going to go into here uh, and grab the hosted endpoint. So if I come in here and I'm going to paste that in here, uh, I want to go back and change that from your image.jpg to oops, workers.jpg. Um, hang on one sec. There we go. So change your image.jpg to workers.jpg. And I want to put my API key in here. Um, and I've actually uh, saved this as a environment variable so that I don't have to divulge it and uh, revoke my API key um, once I publish this to YouTube. So I stored that in RoboFlow key. Um, and you can do that same thing by typing export RoboFlow underscore key equals and then your key. Um, that'll put it into your environment. Um, so if I hit enter, this is going to uh, essentially uh, encode that JPEG image as base64, which is a string, and it'll send it up to the RoboFlow API and get back a response. Um, so you can see that first one was actually pretty slow. Um, that's because it was spinning up infrastructure because this model hasn't been hit in a while. Uh, the second time that I hit it, it's going to be much faster because that machine is already up and running. And we handle 
the uh, scaling up and down of servers um, so that you don't have to really worry about it. Um, eventually, if this model isn't hit for a while, we'll scale it back down to zero um, and we've abstracted all that cost away um, so that we're responsible for that scaling up and down. You only pay based on the number of inferences that you hit the API with. Um, okay, so that's how we hit the remote API. Uh, it was really simple. Um, we actually have a whole bunch of um, sample code in our documentation at docs.roboflow.com. Um, so if you go to the hosted API, uh, you can scroll down to our sample code uh, and whatever programming language you want to use, um, we'll show you how to do inference against your model. So that was just doing it via curl, which is um, a command line um, tool. We have Python code, we have JavaScript code, and we have code for a whole bunch of other programming languages too. And if there's one that you see that uh, you know, you're writing your application in that we don't have, which I think PHP uh, is one that we don't have, um, you can just click here and uh, someone on our team will actually write the code snippet for you. Um, we are dedicated to supporting every programming language with um, this stuff and it's, it's very generalizable. Um, and so if you're working on something that we don't have documented yet, um, you can either contribute it to us uh, and we'd be happy to add it to the docs or uh, we will add it to the docs for you. Um, okay, so that was the remote hosted API. Now uh, let's look at what's called edge deployment. And so there's a few different reasons why the hosted API might not work for you. One might be your device is gonna be deployed someplace out in the wild where it might not have a reliable connection to the internet. And in that case, you're gonna to wanna to load the model onto the device and use it there. Um, so we support a whole bunch of different devices. We support any uh, Intel type machine, any NVIDIA CUDA machine, um, the NVIDIA Jetson uh, embedded devices, and the Luxonis Oak uh, amongst others. Uh, we've got support for the Raspberry Pi coming as well. Um, and if there are other devices that you're interested in having support for, just let us know. Most of them are on the roadmap uh, and, and should be coming out soon. Um, so we're gonna see how to run this actually on my computer. Um, I can show you um, basically how to, how to swap out the hosted API for one that's gonna run on premises. It could be running on my machine. It could be running in my virtual private cloud. It could be running on a server on my network. Uh, it's basically up to you. And the way that we handle that is via Docker. Um, so essentially that uh, hosted API that you saw, you can think of it as a microservice. It is uh, encapsulating your trained model into its own server uh, so that it doesn't matter you know, whether you're writing your application in PHP or Python or uh, whether you're writing you know, in Swift or uh, Java for a, for a mobile phone. Um, basically, your, it separates your concerns between your model and your application. And in fact, you could have a, a, you know, a multi-platform app that's all hitting the same uh, model. And uh, you, know, you could be developing those independently. Maybe one person on your team is responsible for one and one person's responsible for the other. Uh, it really uh, helps essentially like pull apart that spaghetti so that uh, you can separate concerns. Um, and so it's really, really easy to do this. Um, Essentially, uh, so I've got my um, curl window over here. I'm gonna clear that out. Uh, and if we recall, um, this was how I hit uh, the remote hosted API. Um, I actually open uh, another window here. So this is running um, Ubuntu. Um, and all I need to do is pull down a Docker image and start a server running locally. So if I do sudo docker pull roboflow slash inference, server. And I'm going to pull down the CPU version, but there's a few different tags. Uh, and if you check our docs, you can find a bunch of them. Um, we have a GPU tag that will run on any device with CUDA and NVIDIA Docker. Um, we have the NVIDIA Jetson tag. Um, we have the Oak tag for the OpenCV AI, AI kit. And there's going to be you know others for Raspberry Pi and whatnot. So if I hit enter and uh, type my password for my computer, um, it's going to go out to Docker Hub and pull down the image. Um, and I already have that. Um, so it says image is up to date. Um, so it's running on my machine. Um, so all I need to do to run it locally is then do sudo docker run net equals host roboflow slash inference server CPU. And that net equals host is going to pass through 
my network card so that I can expose my ports uh, and be able to essentially run the server and access it from the outside. So here we go. Uh, inference server is online and ready to receive traffic. If I go back to my web browser, I can... Um, oops. I can see that it's running by going to localhost 9001. Uh, it runs on port 9001 and see that the Roboflow inference server CPU version 1.1 is running uh, and um, basically it's ready ready to be hit. And so all I need to do to use that uh, is over here where I had to tech.roboflow.com, I just swap out this new server that's running locally. Um, so it's running over HTTP slash slash localhost port 9001. And the first time that I hit it, uh, it's going to come over here and download the weights from the Roboflow server. So here it's downloading the weights. It'll take a few seconds to download the weights and then a few seconds to initialize them in memory. Uh, and then it'll return back the predictions. And so remember there were, I think, six guys with helmets. Helmet, 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 helmet. And a guy uh, without a helmet that was ahead. Uh, and this should be uh, very, very similar to the results that you get from the inference API, but now it's running on my local machine. And similar to that remote instance, um, basically once it's hot and it has the weights in memory, um, any subsequent one uh, inference is a ton faster. And so this is running on my CPU, um, but it's actually quite fast. Um, I think I was getting about four to six uh, uh, frames per second on my Intel CPU, which you know, isn't particularly top of the line. But if you need more, uh, like I said, you can use the, the GPU and pass through your CUDA uh, device um, with NVIDIA Docker and you, you'll get a, a bunch faster inference. Um, or try one of those other accelerated devices like the Oak. Um, so basically uh, what we've done is we've abstracted and uh, split out your computer vision model into a microservice. Um, so no matter which device you're running on, you can uh, develop either you know against something hosted locally or the inference API and uh, then swap out uh, whatever the device that you're using is and seamlessly switch um, so that it actually uh, doesn't matter um, you know what you're developing against you can have your same model running across all those different things um, the other thing that I'm going to show you uh, is that we have deployment to the web browser which is pretty cool we actually use tensorflow.js uh, to do this um, but if I go back over to that uh, hard hat data set and click try in my webcam, of course, I'm going to run into problems here. Live demos are fun. Uh, not really sure what went on there. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, it, it turns out that recording my webcam like that wasn't letting it come through to Chrome. So after disabling that little circle version of me, um, now we're running this model in my web browser. And you can see uh, this model actually wasn't trained on people with hats. Uh, and so it's detecting hat or no hat. Uh, it's detecting my hat as a helmet. Um, but this is running in real time at 32 frames per second right inside of Google Chrome. Uh, and so uh, this is the, the third different way that you can deploy. You can either deploy uh, in that infinitely scalable cloud hosted API. You can deploy on any number of edge devices, or you can deploy directly into your users web browsers. Uh, and so with these options, we think that you're going to be able to build some really cool stuff. Uh, once you do, let us know, we would love to feature you on our blog, uh, or in some case studies. Um, and if you build something really cool, we'd be happy to send you some swag. And so without further ado, uh, that is an overview of all the different ways that you can deploy your custom computer vision models. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great computer vision content. And until next one, happy inferring.